Traditional smartphone design has been somewhat stable for the past few years. Sure, there are bigger and better phones with full screen displays and whatnot, but for the most part, design has stayed pretty traditional to the two pieces of glass and aluminum sandwich that we've seen before. Then again, that we've seen a pretty big rise in popularity for foldable devices. Phones just like the Galaxy Z Fold 2 or the Huawei Mate XS, both are making their way into the hands of the everyday consumer, which begs the question, are they the future or is there something else? Well, I was able to meet with one of our talented writers, Drew Batani, who was able to get hands-on access with the Oppo X 2021 concept phone, the first to market prototype phone that features not a foldable display, but a rollable one. So rather than have me regurgitate all the details, I'm gonna have him tell you all about it. So let's uh, start talking about what is the phone, uh, what's the name, what is it? Well, so it's the Oppo X 2021, and it's their rollable concept form by its very name. That basically means that this is never coming to production in its current form. As it turns out, Oppo is, re is aiming for 200,000 rolls and unrolls uh, before it can hit production with this phone. Uh, and they're at about 50% of that. So I think it's still uh, a while off, at least about a year, maybe. I got a chance to try out this phone as I would use any other smartphone for, for two full days. It's, it's interesting to see that Oppo is confident enough to give this out to reviewers, to journalists, to try it out you know, from their own home. Uh, they have enough faith in the product. Um, and I mean, I'll be honest here, for a concept phone, for a prototype, it's actually pretty far along uh, and was very usable on a day-to-day -day basis. It has some issues and uh, for example battery life like that's something that the optimization for that comes at a much later stage uh, so battery life was absolutely absolutely trash on this uh, but you're willing to let go of the, some of those things because this is a prototype at the end of the day how, how does it work how does the rollable feature work you know how does the display technology just in really basic terms mm -hmm. obviously you know not to get too in depth but you know how would it work it's it's actually pretty straightforward the magic is in the display of course um, and what Oppo's done is one side of the phone is essentially a hinge uh, with two motors attached to it and the entire plastic OLED display rolls up inside. Uh, it's pretty thick, about 10.7 millimeters thick. Uh, so this is one of the heavier and thicker phones that you will come across this year. Uh, almost 280 grams, so you're definitely going to feel the entire weight of that phone. Um, and uh, you just have to swipe the power button up and down or down you swipe it up the the two motors actuate they're pretty loud you can't miss them um, and the entire chassis of the phone essentially just slides out it takes about two and a half seconds or so for the display to move switch over from 6.7 to 7.4 uh, inches and uh, and that's about it and then you swipe down on the power button and it'll just roll back in. What was your day-to-day -day use like? You know, uh, did did you enjoy the experience? Um, do you mm -hmm. think that it has a future, like in you know the next two years or maybe so, or is it going to be longer, closer to five or even ten years? As a day-to-day -day usage, uh, I, I used a lot of social media. I used I used it for a lot of reading for YouTube. Uh, I don't see a phone like this being. A huge improvement as far as media consumption is concerned or at least watching YouTube content or maybe movies because uh, a lot of the content is produced for say a 19.5 or a 21 is to 9 aspect ratio and uh, the idea here is that when the phone's display moves moves out it, it unrolls you're getting something closer to a 4 is to 3 aspect ratio which is pretty close to uh, it's not an exact 4 is to 3 but it's pretty close to what you get on an iPad uh, now what you get there is something that's really conducive for reading text. Um, if you want to use it like uh, as a replacement for a Kindle, it's it's a drop-in replacement. If you read magazines on your phone, this is going to be a perfect replacement for that. Um, even for reading web pages, you get a whole lot of overflow content, uh, both horizontally and of course since this just becomes all, an almost 50% larger screen, it's uh, you get a whole lot more information density which makes it perfect for reading content uh it it is also pretty good for games but i i the way that i see it is that it's going to take a while for games to get optimized for it because as of now there's there are no games that are really meant for uh, a rollable form um, so everything that i tried out it's essentially just stretched out to a larger aspect ratio 
uh, but it doesn't really make use of the extended screen space. Um, a couple of the o OPPO apps also support dual screen mode, so to speak, so you can have two of them open side by side. Uh, with broader support, this again could be something that's quite useful, but as it stands, there's just not as enough third-party support, which makes sense since there are no commercial rollable phones out there right now. Yeah, let's talk about more about the future. So wh where do you see this you know, coming to mm -hmm. market, or when rather? The, the state of the concept phone that I tried out was good enough that I can see if they can get the resilience issue sorted. This product could be out in the market sometime next year. Okay, wow. Uh, at least, you know, August to September of 2022, I can see this being a commercial launch. And the way that I see for the, the future of foldables and rollables, uh, it's not going to be an either or situation. There will be different form factors appealing to everyone. We saw that with the original Z Fold, the Z Fold 2, and then the Z Flip as well. Uh, they're all catering to different audiences. The Z Flip is for somebody who wants a compact phone, even the motor razor for that matter, uh, whereas the Z Fold gives you a larger screen. Now, in the case of phones which uh, are essentially trying to give you a tablet-like -like experience by transforming into a bigger display, that's one area where I see that uh, rollable phones could replace foldables uh, simply because they're half the thickness. The, you just cannot uh, make a foldable and have it the size of a normal phone. Uh, you could keep on going thinner, but there are uh, concessions that you'll have to make. You'll either have to reduce the size of the battery or the phone just won't be sturdy enough. Um, gotcha. So at least as far as current technology goes, uh, at least with a rollable, you get a phone that's reasonably thick. Uh, it's not It's not like two phones stack on, stacked on top of each other and you have the flexibility of getting a larger display whenever you want it. Uh, and I see that's the kind of use cases where rollable phones can can supplant foldable phones. So this has a motor in it. Um, what do you think that's gonna affect in terms of like the shelf life of this phone? Obviously, it's going to stop working at some point and you talked briefly about how Oppo wants to get it to 200,000 rollouts. Um, do you think that's some sort of planned obsolescence? Do you think that's going to be long enough? Um, how do you see that impacting the phone as a whole? So here's the thing, those 200,000 rollouts are uh, assuming you're going to be rolling out the phone 50 times a day. Nobody's going to be doing that. And that's still going to give you five years of usage, uh, which is longer than anybody keeps an Android phone. <laughs> uh, but you know, talking, <laughs> I mean, you're not going to get software support for five years. So you if if you're using a two thousand dollar phone and I mean, I'm just taking a guess based on you know the current price of foldable devices, this is not going to be a cheap phone. Uh, you're the kind of user who's going to want to move on to the latest and greatest. Uh, so you're probably not going to hold on to your phone for five years. But leaving that aside, even if we just talk about motors, motors are not a new technology. Uh, they've been done to death and they don't really break down that easily. If you drop your phone, that's a different scenario altogether. There are practically no reported cases of pop-up mechanisms on phones breaking down. Uh, so sure, there is a lot of concern around uh, mechanical components breaking down, but is there any historical precedence of this being a wide scale issue? No. I don't really see the motor being an issue. Uh, the motor has other issues where it's way too loud right now and that's something that they'll ha that OPPO will have to work on uh, but beyond that uh, my issue is more around how well the plastic coating on the display will hold up uh, because even in the two days that I use the phone uh, the the rail track on which the display essentially rolls out uh, it has a tendency to gather a lot of dust and India is a very dusty country it's near, it's practically impossible to keep the phone sterile or free of dust, entirely free of dust. What kind of impact that has on scratches on the display, I'm not really sure. But clearly it is enough of a concern that Samsung also had to redo the hinge mechanism on the Z, Z Fold 2 uh, to flake out the dust. Um, and that is something that OPPO will have to consider. Or gotcha. perhaps, you know, by the time they get out uh, a commercial product, they'll be able to use some implementation of ultra-thin glass on the phone. Um, where do you see this product's mm -hmm. implementation in the market? 
Do you think it's going to be the future of phones in you know 10 years? Do you see Apple ever creating a rollable phone or maybe Google? Um, or is this something that's gonna be more kind of a niche product and maybe won't take over uh, what we would consider as a traditional smartphone? I mean, you gotta think long term here. Uh, you look at really high resolution cameras or super fast charging, you're getting that in $200 phones these days. Uh, but it's taken time to get there. So at least at launch, this is going to be a premium phone. Uh, but I mean, just like high refresh rates, high resolution displays, AMOLED panels, you get a Redmi phone with a 120 hertz display for $250, $300. Uh, this is going to trickle down to the mass market. But I see this taking at least four to five years till we're at that point. Gotcha. Uh, because no, it's it's not even just the the manufacturing cost. It's the cost of R and D. It's the cost of scaling up the technology, and that's going to take another four to five years, uh, by my estimate. Uh, and as for Apple, I mean, I the way that I see it, there's a higher chance of Apple using making a rollable phone than a foldable phone. I don't see them wanting a crease down the middle of their of the mm, iPhone. Interesting. I never actually thought about that. That's a that's a good point. Are there any other you know, competitors in the market right now, or is, is Oppo really the first to market? They're the first to market with a product that you can touch and feel and use. Okay. Uh, LG has, LG showed off a rollable phone before they pulled the plug on the entire <laughs> cell phone business, <laughs> which is a bit of a shame. For sure. Uh, they did make some good phones. And uh, TCL has been teasing a rollable phone for the longest time, but nobody's seen a production model or a or a working concept. So we have no idea if, if that phone truly exists or not. So as it stands, Oppo is the first to market with a rollable phone. And uh, I think it's going, to, it's going to be a confluence between the hardware and software. Uh, for example, I, the part of the reason that I really enjoyed using this phone is the way content seamlessly flows. It's not a jarring transition between uh, a standard sized phone and uh, say something the size of a small tablet. Everything flows seamlessly. They've got a beautiful transition that takes you uh, between the two states of the phone. And it's the software experiences that are going to make a difference. Because at the end of the day, if a user doesn't get any utility out of it, they're not going to see the reason, the any point in spending extra money on, on a phone like this. For phones like these, for foldables or rollables to go mainstream, they need to be they need to be tangible use cases, and uh, that's that's going to take a while. Hopefully, over the next year or two, we're going to see more developers stack on support, and uh, the entire market will will play out accordingly. How do you see this impacting things like TVs? Um, and uh, you know, we saw the wallpaper TV a couple years back. Um, do you think that this type of technology is going to be used other than uh, than smartphones? Absolutely, and I think that that use case extends to smartphones as well. Uh, it affords you the opportunity not just to have a four is to three, or a nine, or a twenty one is to nine, or a nineteen point five nine is to nine aspect ratio. It can scale dynamically. So depending on the kind of content that you're watching, you could get a perfectly sized screen for that without any black bars. Now, when you apply this to a television, uh, that becomes much more interesting because, well, you have a display that's perfectly suited for the content that you're watching. Um, or perhaps, you know, like we saw with the Galaxy Note series, and also something that LG is doing with its um, rollable televisions, you can have a section of the display which pops out just for displaying the time or just for showing notifications. Uh, even in the case of television, you have it slid all the way down and you have, say, it popping up about an inch or two and it's just showing you a, a new sticker. Mm. Uh, and these are interesting use cases that are not possible with foldables. Uh, so the ability to dynamically adjust the size of the screen to whatever you want or whatever suits the medium, I think that's also going to afford a lot of options. It could very well be a game as well. Uh, I mean, the game could be designed for a standard screen size or a standard aspect ratio, but if you've got a rollable phone, it's going to just extend out, um, either give you a separate control, separate, a separate D-pad, or could be showing you additional information, or you could be playing something like Diablo, and now you have a whole lot more information available on the screen. 
um, dynamically adjusted for the kind of content that you're consuming. Gotcha. Okay, cool. Well, um, do you have any other final thoughts uh, before we kind of wrap this up? Uh, using this phone over a period of two days, and I have used practically every phone level on the market. This is the first time I felt that this is potentially the future of where smartphone usage is going to go. Uh, it's a phone that easily fits in my pocket. It's a phone that I can easily hold up, wait notwithstanding. Uh, and it seamlessly adjusts to what I want to do. So if I'm and, and it's usable in one hand. I've got it held up in one hand. You just slide it up with a finger and suddenly you've got a full fledged tablet in your hand. And that's 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 absolutely amazing. Opus did a really good job with the distribution of this phone. I did not expect to be able to hold it up with just one hand, uh, unroll it in one hand and you know still have it being really comfortable. So that's that's it it's a surprisingly polished product for something that's just a concept. And uh, I came away really impressed with it. As you can see, the Oppo X 2021 is a really interesting phone. However, after talking with Drew, what I found most interesting is that where he thinks rollable devices are going to fit in the future market. He doesn't think that rollable phones are going to overtake foldable ones, and I have to agree. Because of their unique selling point and unique ability to offer a completely different experience for consumers, I see these devices as coming alongside foldable ones. In the future, it's not gonna be a question of rollable or traditional, but rather it's gonna be a question of rollable foldable or traditional because they offer completely different use cases for each person. Either way, there's more options, which makes me really excited for the future of smartphones. Well, that's going to wrap it up for this video. Let me know down below what your thoughts are on rollable technology. Do you think it's the future? Why or why not? Just let me know down below. Also, let me know any other questions you have related to technology and I'll answer them at the end of the next episode. That's going to wrap it up. I'm Luke Pock with Android Authority and I'll catch you in the next video.